Hello friends and book babes. Welcome back to the channel and to Bookmas. Okay, so I think we're on day like seven of Bookmas. But for today's video, I thought since the last one I did of me tier ranking um, book romance tropes, it was really fun. So I decided let's do one for the series I've read this year. I figured series would be easier. I read like almost 70 books this year and so doing all 70 of those would be difficult. If you guys want me to do that, I still can. But I figured we could do series. And so here's my tier ranking list here. Um, so at the top I have superior and then I have slays after that. And then in the middle, I have She's Cute. Then the second from the bottom, I have WTF. <laughs> and then at the bottom, I have Disgrace to Readers Everywhere. So since I'm doing series, briefly I'll say I do plan on rating each book in the series individually. But then I also have a picture of the box set so I can rate the series overall as a whole. And so I only have the box set of series that are like fantasy, dystopian, stuff like that, not like a romance series because usually romance ones are interconnected standalones. Um, so I just felt there was no need to do that. And then also for books where I haven't finished the series, I don't have the box set for that because obviously I can't rank the entire series if I haven't read it. So let's just get into it. I have A Court of Thrones and Roses, of course. This was the first series I actually read this year. and definitely we're gonna put her in she's cute um i do have vlogs of these books that i read if you would like to check them out but definitely the first one was giving what's with the hype again like it's nothing that special really but then we met my husband okay and so we had to put him in superior a court of mist and fury is my favorite of the books in the series and he is superior, okay? Rissan is superior. Granted, I haven't read Silver Flame yet. So, Cassian? But when the other Bat Boys gets their books, maybe maybe minds will be changed. I don't know. For that, I have A Court of Wings and Ruin. I'm going to put her in She Slays. I still stand by the fact that there probably should have been a little bit more death. Yeah, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> a Court of Frost and Starlight. I read this... Uh, via audiobook and so I honestly don't remember much of it I do need to like re give it a reread but I'm just gonna put it in she's cute because I don't think it's it's bad enough to say WTF but I don't know if it's good enough to say she's cute either to be honest <laughs> so yeah um, but the box set, so like the series as a whole, minus the Silver Flames. Silver Flames is about uh, Nesta. I am not going to include her into this little box set. I'm definitely going to put in She Slays. Now, I'm not putting it in Superior because I do think that there are better series out there than Akatar. It's kind of basic when it comes to <laughs> fantasy, if we're being completely honest. But I think people love it because of the feelings it brings. And that's valid too. So, yeah, but... Objectively, the entire series I would probably put in She Slays. Sarah J. Mass has definitely had better, which we'll get to in a little bit. <laughs> but after that, we have Caraval. So I, yeah, <laughs> I am a part of the group of people that didn't necessarily like this series. I think Legendary, I liked a little bit more. Um, so I'll put her in She's Cute, but Caraval gets WTF because I... Like, the entire time, I was just kind of like, I feel as though she never truly, like, made me feel like there was a reason for this book to be written and published. <laughs> you know, it was kind of just there. It was very much like, I have not cared about a single character but Jax in this entire thing. So... We're going to put the box set also in WTF. Legendary, it was a little bit more in the She's Cute area just because of Jax. And Jax is definitely in uh, final, finale, whatever. Um, but the way it ended, I was like, that sucks. I love Jax. <laughs> but then we got Jax's book. And so Once Upon a Broken Heart, that series. So the first book I would definitely put in She's Cute as well, but above 
all of these actually. I didn't understand necessarily why everyone was going so feral over the first book. It felt very much to the point where it was like, it's not bad, but why is it so hyped up? She was cute. She wasn't terrible. Now, A Ballad of Never After though, superior, okay? Superior. Oh, the entire book, not just the ending, but the entire book was so much better. The tension between Evangeline and Jax was so much better, which they had some in Once Upon a Broken Heart, but I feel like that's really all people liked about Once Upon a Broken Heart. Like, I like, you know, um, but A Ballad of Never After, the storyline was progressing a lot more and you started to learn a lot more things and plot was really going in the second book. Curse of True Love. Truly, I'm going to put it above these just because, would that be fair? Actually, I don't know. Okay, so there was a lot of hype around the last book because it was the last book and the way A Ballad of Never After ends is pretty huge you get to that one <laughs> and there were so many questions that were left unanswered there was so much of a certain character's pov that none of us cared about there was so not enough of jack's pov that, there was just so much wrong with it but also i read it in two days it's one of those, you know, it's like I can read this entire thing in one sitting, but after I finish, what did I just read? And that is kind of the epitome of a curse for true love. So truly, like if we were being, if we weren't putting feelings into it, then a curse of true for true love, I'd probably put at the back end of it, which I, I guess I will. I'll put it towards the back of the line for WTF. But like the feeling, the letdown of it all would make me want to put it at the front of the line. So for the box set, I would probably, this is just such a confusing series where it's like, I don't even know if I would recommend the series. I guess I, I guess I would, but I would warn people of like, be prepared. Like, the ending kind of is mm. so I'd probably put her in she's cute and yeah I'm gonna put her towards that towards the back I just recently read the Hunger Games trilogy as y'all know from book miss <laughs> and so the Hunger Games oh my gosh she so the first one I'm gonna put superior I think I'm still in that like I don't even know phase of everything Catching Fire, I'll put in, ooh, I'm going to put her in Slays, and I'll put her in front of everything. And then Mockingjay, I'd probably put She Slays, but after. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, mm. <laughs> So yeah, she slays just because the ending was so rushed. I don't know. But the box set is the entire series as a whole, definitely superior. So then after that, Poppy War trilogy. Oh my God. There's not enough hype about the Poppy War trilogy. Let's be so for real. The first one we're going to put in superior and we're going to put her. Oh, I forgot to. Let's hold on. My bad. I forgot to do this part. Um, yeah. Yes. But Poppy War, we're going to put right here, actually. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Nope. No. Actually, hold on. <laughs> I'm like trying to figure this out. There we go. That sounds better to me. Yeah. For Hunger Games, I would say the series as a whole is superior. And then Hunger Games is in between The Poppy War and A Court of Mist and Fury. I think that works best. But The Poppy War, oh my gosh. So I will say, if you haven't read this series, it is very gruesome, like very gruesome. It shows you the legit terrible sides of war. And so if you can't handle that, definitely don't read this because <laughs> it is pretty gruesome. Like it's probably one of the most gruesome I've read of a fantasy type of book. So yeah, keep that in mind if you are interested in reading it. And The Dragon Republic, same thing. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to put it above. Yeah. 
above the poppy war. And then Burning God. So Burning God, um, I'm going to put her in She Slays. And I'm going to put her... Uh, I'll put Burning God right there. Yeah. Burning God, I, it was still such a good book but i felt like it was a little too long for the ending it had um and it started to make me be like oh rf kwan kind of has a very specific way of doing something to a main character that she also did in babble like i think it made sense for the ending of the story but i do i did remember wishing that there was a little bit more since the book was so thick that there could have been more at the end and some cut out in the middle just because i feel like there was a lot left to the imagination so that's pretty much what it was um the series as a whole is definitely um superior and we're gonna put it uh i'm gonna put it right here and so then what else do i have in fantasy throne of glass remember when i said sarah j mass has better yeah this is what i was talking about okay so for assassin's blade the prequel that everyone argues about um where to put or where when to read it so i read it third so i read it after crown of midnight and i have to say i don't know if i agree with that just because as someone if you don't know anything about the series i think assassin's blade is the way to go first just because of like everything that happens towards the end it's so shocking it would make you want to go into the next book and it would make you understand selena so much more and so i think i definitely wish i had read assassin's blade first but if you do already know certain things then if you wanted to do assassin's blade third then that would be okay too no that's not the way i feel like everyone has to talk about the reading order <laughs> at some point because there's so much debate about it but so i would put assassin's blade and she's cute and i would put her uh, i'd put her above yeah yeah I definitely probably would want to read Assassin's Blade more than Once Upon a Broken Heart, if I'm being honest. So get out of my way. Thank you. Um, so I would put her right there. Throne of Glass, I would put in... Um, She's cute, too. I'd probably put it right there. Yeah, because I just remember reading it since I was reading it first. I was just like, are we really spending an entire book over her training to possibly be an assassin? Like, I thought this would be resolved in, like, 10 chapters, and then we get on with it. So I was kind of annoyed with that. But <laughs> like I said, if I had read the Assassin's Blade first, maybe I would have liked it more um, and connected with Selena more. I don't know. But anyways, so Crown of Midnight. Crown of Midnight, if it wasn't for the ending, she would be in She's Cute. But we're going to put her in She Slays, and we're going to put her there. Yeah. So. The ending, I guessed the ending, but the ending still is like kind of insane. <laughs> now, Air of Fire. Air of Fire is one of my favorites from this book. And so I'm gonna put um I'm gonna put Air of Fire. Ooh, uh, actually, yeah, no. Where do I want what are, Ooh. I cried my eyes out for Air of Fire. So I'm going to put her there. And like I said in my Hunger Games video, if I hadn't watched the movies before reading the books, I'd probably have a more like visceral reaction for the Hunger Games books. But since I watched the movies, everything in the book kind of just felt a little bit more anticlimactic because I knew it was coming type of thing. And so if I had just read the books first, then this ranking could be different. But since I didn't, <laughs> AR Fire is going to be at the top just because, oh my gosh, there's a vlog of me somewhere with this one. And I was crying my eyes out <laughs> for the ending. It's one of my favorites. I know everyone says Queen of Shadows is one of their favorites, but I honestly don't even remember like half of what happens. I just remember being so like shocked that we really spent like 200, maybe even 400. I can't even remember, but we spent like two to 400 pages literally for one plot that was very easy to subdue. 
And I was just like, are are we for real right now? So that kind of just like made everything else not as fun <laughs> for me. But we're going to put, but the ending was insane. I will say that. Um, We'll put Queen of Shadows. I guess we'll also put her in Superior, but I'm going to put her after Hunger Games box set. Um, and then Tower of Dawn. This is an unpopular opinion, but I really like Kale. He gets tampon level hate. If you know, you know. Um, and so I was expecting him to do something tampon level, but really it was all just based on like expectations that you put on him that he didn't really like think he was supposed to do. And like, it was just like very like almost miscommunication, but not. And so I don't know. I just, I really like Kale and I think people need to chill out (laughs) when it comes to him. So I'm going to put him in She Slays. I do think it did not need to be nearly as long as it was. I think it could have been novella size and it would have been fine. Um, But yeah. Then Empire of Storm was so good. The ending, I did low-key guess the ending. I'm not even going to lie. But the ending was so, it was still crazy. It was still so good. So I'm going to put Empire of Storm right there. Um, And then the last one, Kingdom of Ash. Kingdom of Ash, we're going to put in... I'm going to be so for real. We're going to put Kingdom of Ash in Slays. And the only reason we're going to do that is because it's literally almost a thousand pages and we still don't know much about like the aftermath of two characters specifically. So, <laughs> so that kind of annoys me a little bit, um, but it's still a great, great book. And so for the box set is definitely superior and I'm going to put it right there, right behind the Hunger Games series. Because at least with the Hunger Games, it's just a trilogy. And like, yeah, the ending was kind of rushed. But it's just three books. You know, with the Throne of Glass series, it takes you a couple books to like really get into it. And so that's just a lot of like there's too much hoopla <laughs> with the Throne of Glass series to have me put it in the top spot. Good girl, oh my God, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I loved this book. I listened to it um, and I listened to it in like one day while I was crocheting. (laughs) Like I just crocheted the whole day away. And um, I'll put it, I'm gonna put it at the end. Yeah, right there. And then she, Good Girl, Bad Blood was she's cute, I'd say. Um, She wasn't nearly as good as the first one, in my opinion. And it was very much the mystery or whatever was something where it's like, how would the audience be able to guess that? Like, we don't know this person (laughs) type of thing. So I didn't, I didn't. And then as good as dead. Yeah, I said what I said. As good as dead was the worst book I had ever listened to, I think. It was so infuriating. The ending was so stupid. Everything about it was stupid. And everything was so drawn out that I was just like, can we get to the freaking point? I don't care anymore. This doesn't set this isn't our character that we know and love. This entire plot, I hate plots like that that this plot was based off of I've always hated them I don't find them entertaining I just find it anxiety inducing and I don't want to read about it I hate watching shows that have that plot let alone reading a book with that plot so I absolutely hated that book I hated it with everything within me and so for the series because of that one book put the entire series in WTF because And I would put it above all of these, all of these, just because of that last book. That last book really pissed me off, to be honest. (laughs) So, yeah. And then we'll get into the Inheritance Games. Yeah, I know. Very unpopular opinion, I'm aware. 
I am aware. But when I read these books, I was like, what? I must be reading something completely different from what the girlies are reading because I did not like one singular book. Why did I finish the entire series? I don't know. I have FOMO, I'd say. Um, but I absolutely, there was not one thing about the books that I liked. Not even the, not even the guys. I didn't even care about the love interests because the the books were just so, the best way to describe it was they were just so juvenile to me. And I understand that it's YA, but like the Hunger Games is also YA and it never felt juvenile. You know, like there's very distinct differences of YA that's great. And then YA that's like, oh, that's YA, mm. you know? <laughs> and so I just, I really didn't like that series. I didn't like any of the books. The ending, her playing chess to like solve problems or something was so just, I couldn't even believe I was reading what I was reading. And I'm not even going to consider that a spoiler because you have no idea what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> but yeah, I hated that. I hated it. Anyways, <laughs> we forgot uh, this one. Daughter, what is it? <laughs> the Daughter of the Moon Goddess. That's what it was. I think this is a duology. Um, I'd put her in She's Cute and I'd put her toward, yeah, like right there because I never actually read the other book. <laughs> that came out after just because it was very much like I don't really care about these characters I don't really care about anything that's happening so there was just no feelings behind it so I just never felt like reading the other book now we can get into the romance category so I read Magnolia Parks um I think in February um I would put her um uh, I don't I don't know, actually. Um, I put. I'm gonna put her. She's cute, and I'm gonna do right here. Yeah. So Magnolia parts. The writing is very beautifully. It's very beautifully written. I'd have to say. And if you go in knowing that the relationship is toxic, then you can have a funner time compared to if you're blindsided by it. Um, and I live for the drama, but I feel like the drama was the same drama over and over and over again to the point where it's like, okay, girl, if y'all don't just spend a summer apart or something and seek, have therapy or something, then maybe y'all can like be okay. You know, like that's all you have to do <laughs> is spend some time apart, go to therapy, and then maybe in like a year or two, y'all can come together and y'all can actually have your like fairy tale ending or whatever. That's all you need to do. And y'all are all rich. So like y'all can afford to do those things too. So it was very much like, which is why I, I don't know how I feel about reading about rich people because it's very much like, okay, your problems could be fixed so quickly if you would just do this, you know? So that's why I put her and she's cute. Um, Daisy Hates. I am definitely a Daisy Hates lover. Um, I love Daisy. I'm a Daisy girl for sure. I'm, I can't wait. I have... Honestly, these two are the only ones I've read, so I haven't read The Great Undoing, but I cannot wait for Julian because he is my favorite. And so I think that's also why I like Daisy Hates so much because J Julian's in it. And I also loved Christian. See, I think the problem with Magnolia Parks is I hate BJ with everything in me. He is one of the characters I hate the most in a romance book that's not like fantasy or something. I hate that character so much. And if, ugh, I just hate him. <laughs> uh, that's all I gotta say. So Daisy Hates, I would put, mm, yeah, I'd put it right there in Slays, but towards the end. Um, yeah. And then Secretly Yours. Um, she was cute, I guess. Uh, and like towards the end, yeah. Probably right there. Like, she's cute or whatever, but she was nothing that special. Um, unfortunately, yours, which is also a part of that series, it's like a little duology, um, and it's about the guy's sister. Unfortunately, yours, I'm going to put in Slays, actually, because that one is Marriage of Convenience. If you watch my tropes tier ranking, you know how I feel about Marriage of Convenience. For the f flight 
Flights and Feelings series, Week in Paradise. This is that type of book you gotta read while you're on vacation on your Kindle or something. Okay, because that's what I did. And I really enjoyed it. It was very just, um, I'm still gonna put her in She's Cute. Like she was nothing spectacular or anything like that. But she did what needed to be done. You know, she was the vacation book, the romance vacation book, fake dating. Um, She's an influencer. They go on like a brand trip type of thing. And I really just enjoyed it. And it was brother's best friend, by the way, also. (laughs) So I really enjoyed it. One Last Job is a part of that series and it's about her best friend. And I really enjoyed this one too. I think I enjoyed it more than one week in paradise it's kind of a workplace romance almost she's an interior designer and he hires her to design his stuff and he pretty much falls in love with her instantly so love it (laughs) and then i have the brightest light of sunshine this one is the only book out in the series so far but there's going to be a second book about the sister i believe in february which I cannot wait. But The Brightest Light of Sunshine, I actually really enjoyed. I'm going to put her in She and She Slays after, unfortunately, yours. Because I do think it could have been shorter. It's age gap romance. She's 22. He's 30. He's a tattoo ar- artist and a- owner of the t- tattoo place. And she's a ballerina. Icebreaker. I know the second book has come out already, but I haven't gotten around to reading it because I read Icebreaker in on Kindle Unlimited. And Wildfire is not on Kindle Unlimited, and I only feel like reading them on Kindle Unlimited. I don't think I will own these. Um, I'm actually going to put Icebreaker. Yeah. Why, you may be asking? Because (laughs) it took like 50% of the book to get to the plot of the book that was like on the back of the book. And I hated that. I hated that. And I truly believe that it was only hyped on Book Talk because there was like smut almost right away. Logically, she's cute or whatever. But she also didn't need to be nearly as long as she was. I think um, you could have deleted like a hundred pages from the book. And it would have been same, same. (laughs) Like, So I think that's really what it is. That is my tier ranking. Um, it's kind of longer, so I'll scroll a little bit for y'all to see everything. Not too many in Disgrace to Readers Everywhere, which is good. That's a good thing. Um, and not too many in WTF either. So we've read some pretty good series this year, which is great for me, you know. But yeah, so this is my tier ranking. Let me know y'all's thoughts on the tier ranking, what y'all would rank your reads. And yeah, if you want me to do the same thing, but for every book I've read this year, let me know. And I might or might not do it. (laughs) But thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Follow me on my socials. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Oh,